our 25th lesson of the Bible and today the inspiration of the Bible what's it mean no doctrine has hurt more in the last half of the 20th century than the doctrine of inspiration there are a great deal of doctrines that are suffering and that for sure for disordered teaching by disordered men and forbidden more women since 1950 especially with the introduction of the revised version in 1952 there have been <clears throat> an overabundance of translations too many <clears throat> any translation above the King James Bible is too many because there is no other translation today in the English but the King James there are the average Christian nowadays doesn't really know what the meaning of the inspiration is at all they have no idea and they may not even heard the word inspiration and the fact is maybe you're a Christian and you're coming on this video to say well what's he talking about inspiration well listen learn get to know the Bible inspiration is an act of God which by his revelation is communicated <coughs> excuse me allergies today oh pardon me a written formula to very people from whom he wanted a reply so the very first thing about the inspiration of the scriptures, it's an act of God. I mean, you think a tornado or hurricane is an act of God. Well, the Bible is too. His revelation, what he proposed for the creatures that he created to distinguish a, and understand about himself and what he has done. What would you know about God, the creation, heaven, hell, without the written word of God. See right there on the screen if you're watching the video, the Holy Bible. What would you know? So God gave us an act of God, written formula, written text by God himself for our understanding. 2 Timothy 3 16 and 17 all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good work <clears throat> all scripture is God breathed all of it Well, we got a problem now. What is scripture? <clears throat> Again, pardon me. Second Peter 1 19 21. We also we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart jesus christ knowing this first that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation now you've heard the names of private interpretation of people who come up with their own silly nonsense serious doctrines religions of cults that is somebody who's taken the bible and read the bible of themselves this is what i say what the bible says and starts a following i can't do that no Bible believing Christian born again by the blood of Jesus Christ is able to say private interpretation. 
This is what I think. It's not what I think. It's not what Stanley Hayward thinks. <clears throat> it's not what you think. <clears throat> Again, excuse me. It's not what your pastor thinks. It's not what your teacher says. For prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spank as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And there you go. Now we got the, 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 the foundation of the inspiration, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Yet, there are evangelical teachers telling people all the time, that what transpired was they were privately interpreted. Events that saw and God had kind a guiding to them. The Lord showed me. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord guided me in this path. The Lord has directed me for our church to go forth and to go and do Careful. Warning. But the Bible says none of it is a private interpretation. That most people trust the writers were inspired. They don't trust that it refers to the text. It's above and beyond the sinner Paul. It's not the man that denied Jesus Christ, Peter. It's not even the man that killed another man called Moses. And in the time of Jesus, the Jews lifted up Moses, lifted up Abraham. It's not the man. It's not the men. It's the text, it's the writing that come from the Holy Spirit by God. When you question if the Bible is inspired. And there are people who deny the book of Jonah. They think there's another Isaiah. They call and question Jeremiah. Well, Jesus said, Jeremiah said, and I can't find it in Jeremiah. You're looking at the man. You're not looking at the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> they reason the ind individuals that penned it are inspired. The people that wrote it. Jeremiah didn't write Jeremiah. Baruch did. It is the... It's the what? And see, when we get into men rather than the text... Then we get other books. Then we get the Koran. Then we get the Watchtowers. Then we get this book, and we get that book, and we get this book, and we get those books. And, and we have taken our eyes off God, the Holy Spirit. It's an act of God, remember? It is not an act of man. Jeremiah's writings were was cut by a penknife and put to a flame. Jeremiah's writings were put into a rock and cast into the river Euphrates. Daniel wrote and God said, seal that up. John was about to write. And, no, 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 no. Put the pen down. <clears throat> the detail that the Bible in its written formula is inspired of God. Breathed out by God. Now, inspired means breathe. When I am talking to you right now, if I had no air in my lungs, I wouldn't be able to talk to you. Back in March and April this year, I had had three bouts with pneumonia. I couldn't talk. I couldn't teach the Bible. I had no air. And there are times now, I'm looking at it, didn't take my breathers. Now, my breathing, I gotta have inhalers. 
And there are times, even right now, with, with the empathy and the COPD that I have, there are times right now I have to take a look, get a breath, to say the next words. And the inspiration is God breathe the Word of God. When you open your Bible, it's literally the... <gasps> yeah, I couldn't breathe right there. Let me try that again. When you open your Bible, it's literally God... <gasps> There's the word. And the words are the breath of God. See, we take the Bible. There's the Bible. <laughs> Open your Bible. There's the Bible. You got to realize that the Bible, the King James Bible only, that those words were the breath of God. Yeah, God may record what uh, another man, what David said. God may record what, what Peter said. God may record what Pilate said. But those words were breathed by God into the people that wrote the Bible by the inspiration breathing of God, an act of God. Now, people come up to me all the time. The Bible is written by man. And you've heard me say, yes, it is. The pen is the man. And the ink is the Holy Spirit. Now, you see this report here that I'm reading from. This is not God inspired. This is a report that i done with, with the works of man, with the works of the Bible. God did not breathe this work. But we're going to learn that there is a, a figure in the Godhead that when I give you these lessons, a figure in the Godhead, I don't want to give it away yet, the figure in the Godhead will take over and work to your understanding that it's not me, it's God. <clears throat> and also comprehend the Holy Spirit of God was directing the writers. See, that's the difference between the Koran. That's the difference between the Book of Mormon. It is not directed by the Holy Spirit. To that, what was written was precisely what God proposed. And that's in the King James 1611 Bible. 2 Samuel 23, 2, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and His word was in my tongue. So God apparently is making certain of this by the agency of the Holy Spirit that when I spoke with my mouth, the words that came out was the Holy Spirit of God. Mark 12, 36. For David himself said of the Holy Ghost, the Lord said to, <clears throat> to my Lord, sit down my right hand Till I make thy enemies thy footstool. The Holy Spirit was in fact given David the words to say. David didn't say those words. David said the Holy Spirit. God gave me what just to say. I know men out there, God told me, God said, God spoke in my ear. Doesn't align with the scriptures. Remember the private interpretation? They build an ark in Tennessee, the United States. Nowhere in the scriptures of the church did it say to go build an ark. Is that ark biblical? Show me, on this side of Calvary, the writings of the Bible for God commanded us to go build an ark. Well, it's a private interpretation. Well, we want people to see it. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. I wouldn't go to that thing. I wouldn't want to go walk the streets of uh, Jerusalem and all that. God will take me through the streets of Jerusalem in the second advent, in the millennium. I'm an oddball. Acts 1.16, men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled. 
which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David, evidently the Holy Spirit used David much, spake before concerning Judas. David was a prophet. And David's prophecies came by the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit prophesies, it's fulfilled. Jane Dixon, Nostradamus, didn't speak by the Holy Spirit. Because some of their prophecies did not come. You know what's lacking in the Quran? Hard shell prophecy. You know, there are 48 at least details of the first advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, and all 48 came to be, including dates and time. Jesus Christ would die at 6 p.m. on Abbot 14. Let's see your holy books do that one. Which was guide to them that took Jesus. Peter stated to the passage of Psalm 41. That again the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spoke. David couldn't know nothing. I couldn't know nothing. You can't know nothing without the Holy Spirit. It's not David spoke by the Holy Spirit, but it's the Holy Spirit talking through the mouth of David. Remove David. Yeah, men wrote the Bible. Okay, yes. And God spoke through David's mouth. If we trust the Bible is the Word of God, and I hope you do, we today have to say that the Holy Spirit is talking through the human authors. Some folks have the impression that the writer says, and the Holy Spirit kind of guides it. The Holy Spirit, I mean, <clears throat> man starts the conversation, and the Holy Spirit is like a shadow. The Bible says, the Holy Spirit spoke it. Didn't guide it, the Holy Spirit spoke. Unlike the Holy Spirit guiding us now and giving the words to say when we need them, this is called a direct revelation, another ooh, interesting word in the Bible. And I mean in the Bible, I mean in the study of the King James Bible, we have another interesting phrase, direct revelation. That's a variance between Scripture and you and I Preaching the scripture beneath the authority and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, you can get a YouTube video, such as this one right here, and the Holy Spirit has taken over and using me through the scriptures to help you guide into a Christian life. Or you can get yourself a YouTube video of an occult or somebody who's master for himself Claiming the Holy Spirit. And the guidance would be me, myself, and I. John 14. 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach all things. Teach all things. And bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I said unto you. He will teach you all things. Your pastor didn't teach you. Your Sunday school didn't teach you. Teach you. Your college professor in Bible class didn't teach you. Now won't be to the college biblical philosopher, educator, smart aleck, scholar, that teaches you away from the Bible, away from the King James Bible, that wasn't the Holy Spirit. That's the teaching of man. I had a pastor I sat under. He wouldn't quote the scripture. Well, you know, this is what these men say. This is what my pastor taught me. I had a Sunday school teacher. <clears throat> I tried to correct. And he was totally wrong. And one of the things was, you know, they tied a rope around the, the high priest's leg. I said, can you show me the scripture? 
Well, that's what I heard men say. It's not what man said. It's what the Bible said. And then he went and quoted somewhere and said, he said, look, right here, I found it. And that idiot, you know where it talks about the robe of the high priest? That idiot misread the word to say robe. And I said, that's an R-O-B-E, not a R-O-P-E. And he befriended me, and he don't have anything to do with me no more. See, there's a difference between what men say, and there's a difference to what the Holy Spirit says. It's either an act of man and an act of God, and the act of God is with the Bible. He will bring all things to your remembrance. You know the Lord's Supper? You partake in the Lord's Supper to show that his death till he comes. That reminds you that Jesus is coming. That's the Holy Spirit work. It's reminding you the death and suffering and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the Holy Spirit working. Because man forgets. Not only does he teach them everything, but he doesn't trust them the ability to remember it. <laughs> Which is one of the arguments. Neo-Orthodox, Neo sideways, those who believe the scriptures were inspired, but perhaps just the thoughts, not the words. Well, what was Isaiah thinking? What was Matthew thinking? It's not what they were thinking. It's what saith the Lord. What spoke the Holy Spirit? It does not say in the scriptures. Well, I was thinking. This is what my thoughts were. No, the Bible says, thus saith the Lord. And Jesus said and answered them. That's what the Bible says. All was taught by the Holy Spirit. All was brought to the remembrance by the Holy Spirit. Again, that, that works in the, in the Lord's Supper. If you do it right, if you do it correct. Now, if you step out around the Holy Spirit, the Bible says there's illnesses, there's death. There, the, the, the Lord's Supper is not something to be taken lightly. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to remind us. You don't forget. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. And the charismatic is always the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit does not speak of himself. But whatsoever he, whatsoever he shall hear. That he shall speak, and he will show you things to come, prophecy. If he didn't attend to them unto all the truth, then we have no object foundation for questioning somebody who stands up and said, God directly spoke to me, and he gave me some additional scripture. Book, chapter, and verse, please. And that's the David Koresh. Additional scriptures that look who I am. And many more. That's the religion. That's where the Catholics come along with their traditions outside the scripture. Well, what's their tradition say? We'll call you know, call his father. What's the scripture say? Call no man your father. We got aids to worship. This over countless places. You're not to have idols or images. Does he give us visions and just continually show us the way to go and influence hearts? Indeed. It is not scripture. It's not a direct revelation, but he does. He guides us through the Holy Spirit at 16, 6. Now, when they had gone through Pyrithia, and the regions of Galatia, 
and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word of, in Asia. Now, I have had in my life a ministry where the Holy Spirit said, go here, don't go there. The Holy Spirit and God has lined me to be somewhere where the Holy Spirit has done a work through me, me being a vessel, to be a witness, to help someone understand. <clears throat> Not me making the understanding, but the Holy Spirit using my mouth and my tongue. And we don't know how it's done. Inspiration not only states to the writings, but it states to the governor of the Holy Spirit over the writers so that what was written was precisely what God intended and in the fact was a finished work. What God spoke through David, David did not go in the corner and say, well, you know, let me add to it. Well, that's not really what the Holy Spirit used. And yet, that is the means and the mode of the modern Bibles when they add and subtract where God says, don't add and subtract. The modern Bibles outside the King James Bible takes the very word of the Holy Spirit and God the Father to the, what did I say, what word? Where was that? Precisely. The King James is precisely the Word of God through the Holy Spirit and the modern Bibles step outside the Holy Spirit and say, well, that's not a better rendering. It's better in the Greek and the Hebrew is better than it. I don't think we should have that in there. I think maybe we should add and help God. So the modern Bibles is where they step out of the inspiration of God and say, an act of man and committees. If you were Joseph Smith, the Mormons, and you saw and enhanced the scripture, then you would have to demonstrate that he directly spoke to you. Correct? How do you start a, a pro? You have to, God spoke to me, to get people to listen. Muhammad, how do you get God to speak and people to follow you? But Joseph Smith speaks that it came from where? The angel named Moroni. Muslims, I forget, is it Gabriel or Michael? One of the two angels. Catholic, all kinds of angels. And then Mary. Now, do, you, do we have any evidence in the Bible that we are not to respond to angels that claims to be giving us a direct re revelation? Yes, we do. But wait a minute. John got the book of Revelation through an agency of angel. <clears throat> and this is where Joseph Smith got his idea. If, if an angel spoke to John, or an angel spoke to me. Revelation 1.1 1, 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, Jesus, to show unto his servants the things which shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. He sent. Jesus sent. Did it say the angel furnished the revelation? No, it did not. It said he passed it. Nevertheless, the, re the re revelation God gave to Jesus Christ. And then he showed it to his servants. The entitlement that is direct revelation by God, from God, and his son, Jesus Christ, is from the Father and from the Son. So the book of Revelation is a direct revelation of God, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit working through John. The book of Revelation comes to us by the Trinity. And what medium did the Holy Spirit use in Jesus? He used an angel. Well, how did we get over here? The Lord said to my Lord, sit down on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Where did we get that from? Well, Mark 12, 36 says, David himself said by the Holy Ghost. So the angel in Revelation is the vessel like David was a vessel. Like Jeremiah was a vessel. But the revelation itself didn't come from the angel. wasn't spoken by the, by the angel like like the Catholics speak of them and Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith speaks of them and the Muhammad speak of themselves and all the world of angels and realms and all the occults. It's me, 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 me. Is it an act of God or is it an act of man? That's the very first question you need to ask yourself. You walk into a church, is it an act of God or is it an act of man? Who's the final authority? That's the question. Inspiration is the work of God using prophets and apostles as human channels, and he can use angels, and as human channels of his revelation to us. There are in the Old Testament and there are in the New Testament angels that spoke. But it's not their words, as is not David's words, as is not Moses' words. Now, if you got an angel that comes up to you and speaks his word, and not God's word, all right? Paul says if an angel or anybody comes and preaches any other gospel, consider him to be a curse. Genesis 42, 23. And they knew not that Joseph understood them. For he spake unto them, uh, he spake unto them by an interpreter. And this is Joseph and his brothers. The interpreter spoke Hebrew. Moses wrote in Hebrew. The words are the inspired word of God. Genesis 42 is a translation of the Egyptian language. Inspiration was translated from the Egyptian to Hebrew to the English, which we have today. You're right. Genesis 42 was written in Egyptian. Then it was put into Hebrew, and then, well, not, it was spoken in Egyptian. The inspired word of God was a translation. Now this is where we get the English. You know, as much as Americans think how important America is, nobody in the Bible spoke English. It's Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic. Aramaic. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say it. And then there was Egyptian. When the Pharaoh spoke, Egyptian. But the writings of the Bible were not in English. So now we've got to, do we and which inspired English translation of the Bible is correct? And these Bible studies, I said we're up to what, number 24 now. we got many more to go. 25. We're on page 56 of 116 pages. These studies are for you to learn what the Bible is. What is in the covers of your Bible called the Holy Bible? And why it's wrong for you to have an NIV, New King James, Good News, and why it is correct and right and holy to have a King James Bible. That's what this whole study is about. 
Because there are pastors out there, there are educators out there, there are scholars out there who will take your ignorance and use it for their advantage to deceive you. This study is for you to understand through the Holy Spirit. Acts 22, 2. When they heard that he spoke in the Hebrew tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he said. So we move from God speaking through the Holy Spirit. And actually, we got the book of Revelation. God speaking to Jesus, speaking to the Holy Spirit, speaking to the angels, speaking to John, which brought to us. The entire revelation is by Jesus Christ, who is God. But we have taken the inspiration of God breathed, an act of God, and now we have it in the languages. And today we have it in the English language that your King James Bible is the very inspired word of God. And I know you heard that expression before. And so what does the King James 611 authorized version, the inspired word of God, what's that mean? It means God breathed. That when you open the pages of your Bible, it's not just words, it's God breathing. The Holy Spirit is alive. The Word of God is alive. And I'm telling you, when you got an NIV uh, and those other cursed, foul, modern Bibles, it's a dead book. You don't like it? That's tough. Paul speaks in Hebrew. And Luke records it in Greek. <laughs> Let's see your scholar do that one. Oh, in the Greek. <laughs> yeah, but Paul spoke in the Hebrew. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scriptures given by the inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Luke in the Greek Wrote Paul speaking in Hebrew. God can inspire a original, and in original, inspire a translation. Now, I don't know if my Bible has this one. If you open up the, the your King James Bible, you may have. I don't have it this one. You may have in your Bible when you open up this, it says King James. Hopefully, you have King James. If you don't, you need to get. In. You need to get a King James. I believe it's a sin not to have a King James. All right, here, look. The Holy Pe the Holy Bible, Old and New Testament, authorized King James version. Translated out of the original tongues and with previous translation diligently compared and revised. That's what we're talking about now. God can inspire an original Hebrew, Greek, African, Egyptian. There's all kinds of different men in their languages in the Bible. And the original inspired translation. Many of the originals were translations. There was never original address in Hebrew of Acts 20, Acts 22. The only written the only record we have is in the Greek which was translated of what he said in the Hebrew. Acts 22 was never in Hebrew written. But it was spoken Hebrew while Luke, the medical doctor, as Paul is speaking Hebrew, he's writing in Greek. That'd be like somebody's taking this lesson right now and they are translating it, the English that I'm speaking, to their language of their country so their people can understand. Let's say 
let's say that this message is being heard in Japan. Somebody's hearing the English I'm speaking and they're translating it into Japanese. That's what happened here. There was never an original address in the Hebrew of Acts 22. To say we can we can have the perfect word of God. But when we translate it from the original, we no longer have the perfect word of God. And there are people out there, the originals, the originals. We don't have the originals. They're gone. They're faded. They're, they're, they, they turned into dust. Jeremiah's originals were burnt and cast into the river of freight. You know, the Catholic Church burnt many Bibles, many scriptures. To keep it out of the hands of the world. And that greatest error of the Catholic Church, the greatest time to keep the Bible out of the Word of God is called the Dark Ages. To make such a statement we read, to say we can have the perfect Word of God, but we translate it from the original. We no longer have the perfect word of God. You are actually denying the original. You know, many... How can I say this? Many students, males and females, who have attended colleges all over the world and the vast time of colleges from the very first college to present and many of them have been given assignments to write and there are many of them that they get down they write they write it out called a rough draft and they take their rough draft, oh, that's wrong. And, then, you know. and when they finally hand their work, their essay, their report, whatever it is, into the instructor, the teacher, when they hand that paper, that's not the original. The original was a rough draft. What happened to the rough draft? Many times it's thrown in the garbage. You don't hand the teacher the, the originals. You did, you get an F. Especially if it's an English teacher. And then when you get the works in written literary works, The Bible has been handed down year after year after year after year. If you had the originals, you couldn't open them because they would crumble. They were made, what, what, what was it called? Paper reeds, papyrus, paper reeds. Remember we, we did that, I think we did that last week. And they only find fragments because it's newspaper print. It's 